Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will take another perspective than the three previous speakers. I uh, will take a step back and look a little bit at the level of Europe. Uh, in fact, I have put in the title the question, did we approach the objectives of INSPIRE? And I will try to answer partially this answer, uh, this question, uh, from the perspective of the lessons learned from the state of play which was carried out between 2002 and 2012. So first I will briefly introduce the state of play, what it is about, but not very detailed. Um, and then I will mainly focus on the trends and the developments we see throughout that study in Europe for national spatial data infrastructures. And at the end I want to formulate some critical reflections and, in our opinion, also points of attention for further development of INSPIRE. And I have some conclusions. Um, so the INSPIRE, or the first INSPIRE State of Play study, the first version of it, uh, started in fact in August 2002. It uh, aimed at that time to support the preparation of the INSPIRE Directive uh, and aimed at knowing exactly what was the status of the different NSDIs in Europe. And then after 2002, 2002 was the launch of the study, but it was repeated annually. The assessment was repeated annually with a break of more or less two years. So from 2003 till last year, there was a version of the state of play. And mainly the study is assessing what we call the building blocks of 32 and over the past two years, 34 countries in Europe. Uh, the building blocks being the organizational, the legal and funding, data, metadata, services, standards and environmental issues. And this was done through a mechanism of 32 indicators reflecting the status of development. So what I will try to do is looking back 10 years, it's more or less 10 years now, uh, and have this question on the table, did we approach the objectives of INSPIRE? And which lessons we can learn and which critical reflections can be made? I already would like to announce that we are preparing uh, a paper for an international journal on this topic. So did we approach the objectives of INSPIRE? Uh, in fact, if you translate this question, you should wonder whether public sector and other users at European, national, regional and local levels are sharing data, spatial data, more now than 10 years ago. And also, is the access, the use and the sharing enhanced? Did the barriers that made sharing difficult 10 years ago are still there or did they partially disappear? And maybe if we could go one step further, I don't, I'm not sure if we can do that and certainly not today, uh, is the question does INSPIRE contribute to an improved decision making or maybe even larger to is the uh, benefit for society at large? Just, I will not explain the methodology again, but the basic idea behind the study was that based on information gathered through websites, documents, contacts with experts in different, in the different countries, and also during the last, over the last two years, based on the f official monitoring reporting information that came from the different member states, based on all this information, and expanded with specific detailed surveys. This was the material to carry out the assessment. So this was translated in 34 country reports, translated in what we call these 32 indicators, and based on that we made the assessment. Um, it should be stressed that the indicators were qualitative in nature, and based on the assessment also we could come up with some conclusions, recommendations, uh, and so forth. Uh, don't try to find out for your country, but this is just one of the latest um, 
sheets, matrices where we compare the status for the 32 indicators between 2002 and, in fact, 2011. Um, so it's indicating the changes over time for the different uh, indicators for the different building blocks. In fact, the green color means that there is an enhancement, there is a progress regarding the topic or the indicator. The red is not necessarily meant or to be negative. You will see a lot of red in the organizational building block, but that's purely because countries can uh, work differently. It's an organizational approach, and it's not necessarily negative or positive. Um, I will not discuss the results itself in detail. You can find all this information in the summary report, the assessment report, which is available online on the INSPIRE website. I want to discuss a few trends that we see throughout or over these 10 years. Um, general trends, let's say. Uh, it is clear that throughout Europe there are, the countries are working at different speeds and with different approaches, mainly organizational approaches. But we think that this is not necessarily a problem. Uh, we also see that within countries there are potentially competing and overlapping goals for different initiatives. Um, initiatives related to INSPIRE, to the NSDI as such, e-government and so forth. We also observe uh, changed leadership and involvement of major user communities. Um, so it's clear that originally in 2002 the majority of the large majority of the countries had an SDI that was led by the national mapping agencies but we have more and more a combined effort of mapping agencies with uh, environmental agencies and so forth, leading to shared responsibilities. We see also uh, dynamic sub-national initiatives and even in a lot of emerging local developments. Uh, and this will be a clear challenge to streamline all these. So for each country, what is to be done at the European level has to be done also in practice at the national level. So that's our first additional observation, which is not to be found in the report. We think it's quite important that for each country in the development of the SDI, it is very important to take into account that the country has its own habitats. Hence, it's very difficult to have an overall one single, one fits for all uh, solution. You can see, um, we see that users and user communities of Inspire and SDI are for most countries not so clear. Uh, there was a question I think for one of the other presentations if we know about the usage. It was one of the surveys was about the usage and we see that the user communities become, start to become and emerge um, uh, and start to become active in different countries if they emerge at all. So there's an effort necessary from the countries, from the member states to link to these user communities. There is clearly also a trend to open data, open data policies, open source, open standards and so forth, yet we do not really know yet the impacts on the developments of the SDI infrastructure. And the last element, which is quite important I think, is that there are fast uh, technological developments. Um, there are many, I just gave a few examples here like link data, cloud computing, the sensor web, you see these developments are taking place and SDI should take these into account, even if it's not part of the legal obligation of INSPIRES. So that's another comment that we want to make from these observations is that the complex and pressing societal problems together with these technical, technical developments require really a dynamic, flexible and effective development of INSPIRE linked to and integrated with other initiatives. So INSPIRE is not something that you build as a system and it's there and it remains as it is. Some trends and developments related to the different building blocks now. 
regarding the organization, um, so we see that, the, as I said, the organizational approach can be very different in different countries. We have more hierarchical approaches against network approaches, combi combined approaches, and so forth. As I said before, that does not necessarily influence the status of the, of the SDI or the, the results. Mostly all the developments are at national level, uh, level. Maybe my own country, Belgium, is an exception in a certain sense. Uh, but it's also clear that there are very good examples at local levels. In the summer report, there are several what we call good or best practices. So you can find them there. I won't, won't describe them in detail here. But for example, on the local level, you see interesting developments in France and Switzerland. Um, the overall maturity of the SDIs, it's varying between one and six. It's a kind of scoring. Uh, you see that there that there is very f countries growing very fast and other countries uh, progressing now very fast over the past few years. And some countries are lagging a little bit behind, but we are not really afraid that this will create a big gap between countries. They will catch up, I'm sure, about that. Another comment based on that is um, we think that Inspire is a real success story when it comes to stakeholder involvement. That's one of the reasons why it's really working. Um, and almost, also most countries succeeded in building their NSDI as a network of st stakeholders. And it, I think that's crucial. If you don't do that, if you miss important stakeholders, your NSDI has a big chance to fail. As I said, there, it seems to be a shift towards more environmental agencies leading the NSDI. But what remains very important is that always, maybe with one exception, but always the mapping and cadastral agencies are taking the operational lead, which is very good, I think, for the sustainability in, in, the, in the long run. Um, a large majority of the countries involve users in one or another way. Uh, but as I said, the real knowledge about users and what they do with the infrastructure is still weak, should be enhanced, and the user needs the knowledge about that is also maybe too limited. Uh, but more and more you see that even new social networks and uh, information channels are used to communicate with the users, like the real social networks, fora, and so on. Uh, we think also that non-public sector involvement could be improved. I think there the private sector should play a more prominent role. Um, in some countries that is happening already, but that should be further developed. The same is true for the education and research. On legal issues and funding, of course, we can now say that transposition phase for Inspire can be considered finished between brackets. Um, yet, we do not really know the quality of the transposition. There might be new issues that will raise, be raised um, or come up uh, over the next months and years. Um, it's still a concern from our perspective that in few countries there are real well thought strategic and implementation plans. So countries seem to develop uh, things as they go. They, they just start countries. More and more countries take into account other legal aspects. That's quite important. That has been mentioned also by the previous speaker on IPR, IPR issues, for example. Um, a framework for sharing between public authorities, it's available in more and more countries, but I think that's an issue that needs more attention. And also a lot of countries, and that is underpinned and underlined by different countries, that funding remains a concern. You need to invest in your infrastructure before you can have the benefits of it. So one of our uh, observations and concerns is that, in fact, in practice, and the, the practice of sharing is not really well known. Uh, also, in the monitoring and reporting we have done, and also monitoring and reporting, the official monitoring and reporting, there is no clear indicator on that topic or that aspect. We know that it has been improved. There are many good examples of progress. But we also know that there are still too many barriers that we described 10 years ago. I will very quickly go through the technical components. Uh, there is an abundance of spatial data coming in in Inspire, but it should be said that there are, is a lot more out there. And as it was said by one of the previous speakers, uh, only part of that is reported through the Inspire monitoring rep uh, reporting. 
And also the difference between the different countries is quite big. Some countries report many, many special data sets and services and other less, a lot less. Um, the same is true for the metadata. The metadata, there has been a big progress uh, over the past, especially the past few years. Uh, for example, uh, there are now 15 countries in 2010, and I don't know the status of last year or this year. Um, have 15 countries have more than 70% of all the reported data sets with metadata. Network service is also quickly developing. Um, more and more are emerging. For example, between, between 2009 and 2010, it grew between 800 and 2,300. And I'm sure that in this year exercise, the reporting was done in May, uh, it, will, it will have raised a, a lot again. The last topic that I want to underline is that more and more countries are also very active again in standardization exercises, which is quite important, I think. So we see technical components are developing at a fast pace. That's a good thing. The question is if that is enough to have a successful SDI and successful Inspire. So therefore, two slides on some critical reflections. We think that focus of different countries and also at European level should be more on the sharing itself. It's the most difficult part. Uh, we have the impression that a lot of countries, which is logic, it's logic, focus a lot on fulfilling the obligations and a lot on the technical developments, which is necessary, but it's not enough. We see the need for increased involvement of user communities. Um, as much as you can, it's a very important message. It's not done enough, we feel. Uh, also, stakeholders that are, that are developing parts, components of the infrastructure should be more structurally be involved in the SDI activities, private as well as academic sector. Um, and I think the opportunities are there to build already on the emerging components, um, added value services and applications and initiatives. Uh, we are a lot concerned about the knowledge and the skill gaps for developing and maintaining the infrastructure and therefore we need to look into this more in more detail because that's not really explicitly foreseen in inspired developments. Uh, three other critical reflections. Uh, we heard about the German case that it's always a discussion what should be put on the list, what is in, what is out. Uh, we uh, advise to be as open as possible and to put as much as possible, uh, not to look in, into that in a more restrictive way, uh, because we should look at the infrastructure from the user perspective. And also wait not too long to make the existing components available to the users. Don't wait to, till you have the perfect portal and till all the services are okay, uh, but just make it available so that it can be discovered, that it can be used. And therefore, you need a strategy in order to do that. Um, I think also the, different, the experience in different countries have also proved that the OGC approach to create an infrastructure in phases where you create a kind of test bed where you can test and play around with services emerging, uh, that this is an added value and that this improves, enhances and makes the implementation of the SDI more efficient and, more, and faster. Conclusions, in fact, no final conclusions needed. Uh, I think Inspire is rather a story that is being written. Uh, I think Inspire has gone through a long way, more than 10 years now, and I am afraid that we will travel still a long time. <laughs> Uh, but I have one last uh, statement. I think we really will achieve all the objectives of Inspire the day that each stakeholder of the Inspire network can say that he or she can leave the network without having any impact at all. Thank you. Thanks to Danny. And his story was very nice. And I think there are lots of ways to take in future, he says. Okay, any question or comments from the audience? Excuse me. Here. 
Thank you. My name is Martin Lenk. I'm coming uh, also from the German SDI Coordination Office. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Danny, and your team for giving us uh, so much information about, you know, the European perspective. I think that is very, very important and that what we expect also from a conference like here. So I think that was indeed very good and very precise. I have uh, one question, uh, maybe a hard question. <laughs> for the Commission, uh, what do you think needs to be done on the European level to improve what we already have done for Inspire? And understood, is, Danny. is that a question for me or for the Commission? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I think I give, will give my perspective uh, or my view. Um, I think conferences like this one are very important to share experience and share knowledge. Uh, I think it was uh, not really foreseen in the Inspire Directive itself to uh, include the knowledge training awareness part of the implementation of the infrastructure. I think that's quite important, therefore this conference is important. Uh, nevertheless, I think that um, the use and reuse of components of infrastructure is not enough. I think we should share more also this knowledge through other mechanisms in a kind of flexible way. I will give an example of your country. I always refer to the example of the monitoring and reporting, how you use registries, how you do conformity testing. And in my opinion, you have different good practice like that one in other countries. We should organize more transfer of knowledge in more in-depth initiatives, workshops, where other countries can come and learn from each other. But in a format that is really a learning environment, where people can learn and play around eventually, even if that's possible. So in addition to the conference and the talks and so forth, we have a general insight. This kind of things is important, and I think the Commission should support this kind of ad hoc initiatives based on a plan. Uh, and that's what I mean also with the knowledge gap. You can plan and you see issues that are raised that could be filled by different good practices or best practices. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Just behind, yes, behind, first. Mm -hmm. Hi, Michael Lutz again. Um, you, you also raised, like one speaker before, the, quest, the, the question that we don't really know what the, what the, who the users are and what they use or will use the Inspire data and services for. Do you have any ideas on how we can, uh, we can get that information, uh, how we can collect that information? Because I think it's, it's quite difficult yeah. uh, to get, as we, we also heard from, from, the, from Daniela before. Yeah. Um, that's a good question and uh, indeed, indeed a difficult one. Uh, we tried to tackle in the in previous year study in the detailed survey um, what the users are, what they are doing with the existing infrastructure and so forth. And the survey revealed that it is very difficult to grasp this and to grab this information and to have an in-depth insight in that. One of the questions in the survey was uh, to the countries to give one or two good examples of existing business processes in which uh, components of the infrastructure are consumed. And several countries could not give one example. Uh, I don't think that there are no examples. I think in all countries there are good examples, but they are not well known. Uh, so my advice to the countries would be that in their coordinating body, that's part of the work plan, to seek for cases. Uh, it can serve as showcases, it can serve as cases to understand better how things work or do not work and so forth. So it's only when you go into the detail that you really see how the things are working or not working. Uh, so I think at the level, it should be done at the level of the, the countries. They can try to seek for these, these examples, these cases. And I think it's very important, it's very important. Well, that last question, I guess, was from there. Thank you. My name is Rumiana Tunczewska from Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. My question is, uh, do you have any information based on your 10 years of experience 
what could be the role of NGOs to push the government to use the information which is created for the environment purpose and for protection of people. And do you have any information what is the balance of private sector involvement, NGOs, because they have a lot of uh, important role, I think, to play to push this initiative from bottom up because the private sector has some interest to use the data for their purposes and on the other side the push from the NGOs is the government to, to start to, to use the data for the environment. So do you have any statistics or any lessons learned or um, you at all include NGOs? Thanks. Yeah. Uh, on the role of the NGOs and similar organizations uh, in the same survey that we have done previous year, so in the last year, um, there was a question about uh, whether the SDI is focusing also on private sector, on academia and also on NGOs. And there you will find uh, the results for that one. I don't know now by heart, but I know that a lot of countries do not consider NGOs as part of the infrastructure as a target public. While others, a lot of others do. Uh, so that's the first thing that should be done, I think. NGOs can play also an important role, whether it be to contribute to data provision. Some NGOs are active in the field of environment and so forth. Whether it be also as a consumer of the, the data and the services. So it's important to involve them as a user and as a provider, as a potential provider. Uh, there are not, not precise figures uh, about the different countries. What you might find in some of the country reports is examples of NGOs of, that play an important role. If they were mentioned in documents or in, by experts, then they probably are there. But overall, I think that's something that could be improved as well. All right. Thanks, Danny. And I think time is up for us. And uh, this afternoon, Again, uh